Alright, let's see. Are you gonna go? Alright. Round one! Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We're at FanFest 2017, and I'm with one of my favorite cosplayers in the community, Muncho. Hi! Yeah. <laughs> How are you enjoying FanFest? Um, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's been, uh, it's been, it's a nice change of pace. Uh, yeah. Phoenix Comic Con, you know, it's kind of like sometimes we're all like sardines and exactly. elbow to elbow. So Fan Fest has been nice. It's been a little bit yeah. chill. We can actually like send our hands out. And yeah, out exactly. Okay. I can swish my cape. Like. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, what is what is your cosplay origin story? How did you get into it? Was oh. it someone that brought you into it, or did you actually discover it yourself? So, like most of my fandoms. I, okay, so I'm going to give you some background story. So I grew up in a small town where there wasn't like a nerd community at all. Yeah. Um, and that's what I gravitated towards. Yeah. So a lot of my stuff I found out through the internet by myself online. Um, cosplay I actually discovered through Deviant Art. Oh, really? Um, and so I was like, man, that's so cool. I want to be Sailor Venus. And her Sailor Venus costume looks so good, but... I don't have any conventions here. Yeah. Like, Where I grew, I grew up in Idaho, okay. so this a small little <laughs> town called Nampa, yeah. and they didn't have like conventions or anything. So it was yeah. like, I would go and see all these people online. This was around probably 2005, okay. and I was just like, man, I really wish I could do that. And I was really envious. Like, we they don't even have like a whole bunch of like. Like, they have one Michaels and, like, one Joanne's. Really? Like, so it's it's not, like, a whole lot of supplies or anything to yeah. even make stuff like that. So it wasn't until I moved out here into Phoenix back in 2009, yeah. I found out about Phoenix Comic Con. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go until 2011. Okay. And my first costume was, like, this crappy eBay bought Sailor Venus dress. <laughs> It was really kind of like spirit Halloween looking. Yeah. And I wore it though and I still had a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I, as I was going to the conventions, um, I actually, what prompted me to want to learn how to make my own costumes is I met the Arizona Avengers there. Oh, cool. And they had a booth there and I'm really big into Marvel. So yeah. I was, I was, um, I was actually dressed up as Black Cat 2012. So that was the following year, and they were all like, come get pictures with us, you look great. And yeah. like my costume, I didn't make myself, my, my friend made it for me. And um, it was a horrible wig, everything. <laughs> like I was just kind of a hot mess, but they were really nice to me. Yeah. And they, when I saw their costumes, I was like, these are phenomenal. They are like, yeah, I made it. I was like, you made this? Like, that's amazing. Yeah. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn how to sew. So I bought myself a sewing machine and I looked up a bunch of YouTube tutorials yes. and this is the product many years later. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Perfect. And what is one of your more favorite moments of the cosplay career that you've had? Was it like some small victory in the beginning or some major accomplishment that you would say? I would say my most favorite moment. Remaking Scarlet Witch was actually a really big moment for okay. me. So my first costume when I joined the Arizona Avengers with Scarlet Witch, it looked nothing like this one. It yeah. was very, it, it was, it reflected my abilities at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, being able to remake it was a huge like personal accomplishment. And for me, it was kind of like, really like that kind of like yeah. heartwarming, like, oh, this is where it kind of started. Yeah with like the Arizona Avengers and everything like that. Now I can see like back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was for personal, but like I would say interaction wise with other people, yeah. Zarbon when I went to WonderCon. Yeah, I, I saw had, that, that was so good. I had no idea cause like, you know, a lot of people do Dragon Ball Z cosplays. I've never seen a Zarbon yeah. in real life. And I love Zarbon. Cause he's like the first character you see like really whale on Vegeta. <laughs> Even though I love Vegeta, like there's nothing about like that I don't love about him getting beat up. Yeah. Because it always makes him stronger and he always learns yeah, from it. Fight. Yeah. So I uh, I really like Zarbon and I was like, nobody's gonna know who I am. He's such a niche character. Nobody cosplays as yeah. him. He didn't even live for an entire story arc. Like he dies <laughs> halfway through a story arc. Yeah. Like nobody's gonna know. I went to WonderCon and everybody knew who I was. They were like, Zarbon, Zarbon. And like they even said like, you never see Zarbon cosplayers. Yeah. And I was like, that was so cool. Cause I, it would totally 
thought it was going to go the other yeah. route. People just thought I was going to be like, oh, who's this weird chick with the blue skin and green hair? <laughs> little did you know. Yeah, yeah, little did I know. Everybody knew. <laughs> yeah, cool. And then on the opposite token, uh, what is your favorite like mishap story? Whether it's like you were had, were so confident in a costume that and then something went wrong, or we like, went to an event thought it was going to be good and it just didn't end up working out. I don't know. That's like that's a really tough one because yeah. I actually do a lot of obscure characters, okay. or I do versions of characters that aren't as popular. Yeah. So I'm always expecting people to not know who I yeah. am. Um, I will say though, what? So this, I kind, I guess it kind of falls into it. Yeah. So I'm, I really love Blink uh, from the Exiles and X Men. I'm okay. a big mutants yeah. lover, so. Uh, I went as Blink and I had the pink skin, bright green, creepy eyes and everything. And this was at Amazing Arizona 2016, I believe. Okay. And um, Scotty Lobdell was there too and he's yeah. a creator of Blink. And he saw me and he got a picture with me. I was like, yeah, fan moment. But then I also made a little kid cry because they were so terrified of my oh, eyes. Really? And like I looked over at them and they're like, busted out bawling. They're like, mom, she's terrifying. Like, I did a good job. Yeah, but like, I was still like, all right. That's awesome. But I definitely scare kids in that costume. Yeah. So I, I usually don't wear it for events, like for Arizona Avengers, because yeah, it's a, it's a little it's creepy. Intense, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and it's usually the eyes. People are like, I, I can't, your eyes are creeping me yeah, out. Stop looking at me. And don't, don't break <laughs> And, um, all right, so some silly questions, which I, I feel like I'm going to know the answer, but I don't want to like assume. What's one character you would bring from any universe to this world to be your best friend for life and why? Just my best friend? Like... Whatever. You okay, whatever. okay. Uh, Vegeta is my all-time favorite okay. fictional character. Yeah. Um, Dragon Ball Z wasn't the first anime that I really got into, yeah. but it was the first time like I fell really hard for a character yeah. and it was just more so his character growth because he is such a complex character he comes yeah. from such a tragic damaged hardened background yeah. even though he was supposed to like pretty much have like everything handed to him on a silver platter that's not how it went yeah, take it away from him yeah. yeah and then like he he learns from that and then he becomes such like a hardened ruthless heartless warrior yeah. And then, but you see him grow again, and he actually softens and yeah. becomes such. I think he's the most three-dimensional character on that show. Yeah. And then the fact that the creator originally wanted to kill him off, but fans oh, loved really? him so much. Yeah, yeah. he was actually uh, Goku was actually supposed to defeat him. Yeah. But fans loved Vegeta so much. They're like, no man, don't kill him off. So he actually left him. That's, Vegeta that's, is, is the original fan favorite. Yeah. Let everybody remember that. But. <laughs> But I, I just loved his, his character growth, his determination, like, and that he like, is always just working so hard, yeah. like, and it all comes from within. Yeah. Like he doesn't really. It isn't until the end of the series you see him draw strength from others, like Bulma and Trunks. Yeah. But for majority of his life, everything is all self motivation, and there's nothing more admirable than that yeah. than somebody who's so determined, so disciplined, and it all comes from within. So like I always like as a kid I was like I respect him so much. He's a jerk, but God I respect him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good character, especially yeah. for, like, the other cartoons we saw around us. Like they didn't have that depth. I feel like. yeah. yeah. And then like you know what really got to me is when you see him cry for the first time on Namek because he is such like you know when you see somebody really strong cry you're like oh shit yeah, they were like at a low point. yeah and like to see him become that vulnerable like for me as a kid like that touched me i was yeah. like dang man this guy he's i can't believe he's crying right now i'm going to cry <laughs> i did cry though in all uh, seriousness right, right. <laughs> yeah right um, and then what you care okay so you're a villain about to take over the world what two characters do you have by your side to stop the heroes from stopping you? Now, they don't have to be super villains. They can be whatever you want. So if you want, like, oh, Luke no, Skywalker I, and, and, you know, Harry Potter to be with you, whatever. No, I'd, I'd want I'd want real ruthless villains. Mr. Sinister, yeah. uh, he's one of my all-time favorite villains. Okay. Oh, my God. I love, I've loved Mr. Sinister since I was, like, five. I was, like... X-Men, like, I'm like, yeah, the good guys are cool, but Mr. Sinister. <laughs> and he, it's just because he's like, he's like, you know, like a Joker character. Yeah. 
they're evil for the sake of being evil. Yeah. Like he does it because he can, because he wants to just prove it to himself. He can do it. Yeah. Like there's no like necessary. Like he he's playing God essentially. He's like I can create my own perfect mutants and stuff. Yeah. But that's really his only thing. It's not like. Oh, I want to take down the X-Men. It's like, no, I want to do this just to prove to everybody that I can. Yeah. So he's like truly evil in that sense. And somebody else. Hmm. This is hard. It's hard to pick just one other. Because there's so many good choices. Vegeta would also be a good choice. He's definitely a powerhouse. Uh, but there are many other choices. Yeah. So I would say Mr. Sinister and... Hmm. I'm gonna go with Cell from Dragon Ball Z. Good. Nice one. Um, he's very similar in that aspect. Yeah. I like villains that are like that. Like his sole purpose was just to become perfect and to prove that he could do it. Yeah. And the fact that he himself can like regenerate, also like Mr. Sinister. They're both really cool, complex characters where they're like science experiments. So I guess I have a thing for villains like that. But yeah, yeah those would be my two choices. Right on, right on. All right. So this will probably get a lengthy, but but you know whatever. Okay. What is your pitch for K-pop? Like why do you oh! think that you should listen to K-pop? Okay. So this is also going to be a story. Going to go back. So I got into K-pop um, back when I was still in Idaho. What got me into K-pop was actually anime. So um, the ending theme, one of the ending themes of Inuyasha, yeah. uh, Boa does every heart. Um, and she does it in Japanese, so I had no idea she was a K-pop yeah. star. Um, this was in the time era, like 2006, 7, 8 yeah. time frame. Um, I was listening, I was watching a lot of anime, listening yeah. to a lot of anime opening and outro theme songs. And um, I found out that she had a Korean version. I was like, oh, she's bilingual, that's cool. So I listened to the Korean version and then I found out, I was like, oh, She's actually Korean and yeah. Japanese was actually not her native language. And through YouTube, they had, you know, they started doing the recommended videos. They're like, oh, if you like this, you should watch this. And that's how I discovered Big Bang's Haru Haru. And it was just down the freaking rabbit hole. I was like, this is amazing. So K-pop, um, I think everybody should give it a chance because it's very different from American music, anything in the Western like culture or scene yeah. uh, cuz it has this whole fandom behind it cuz it's not just the music you know um, you can go like I love all types of music um, and I go to shows regularly but like you know when you go and see other bands you know uh, like I went and saw AFI and it was like yeah they put on yeah. a stellar performance I love AFI I went and saw Motion City soundtrack I'm going to go see Still Panther yeah. later on this uh, later on this month and you know and you talk about your favorite songs you talk about your favorite albums and you talk about, um, you know, the show, but that's about it. But, like, with K-pop, it's like, oh, did you know their music video has a story behind it? Oh, did you know, like, there's a story behind their costumes? And yeah. did you know that they're telling a story with their dance? Like, it's it's everything. It's not just the song. It's yeah. the visuals. It's the story behind it. It's an ongoing huge thing. Yeah. And, like, they hype it up like movies. Like, they'll release promotional trailers. They'll release teaser trailers for their music video. It's really different. And so there's this whole culture and fandom behind yeah. it that no other music scene has. And it's really addicting. But if you want to get into K-pop, you got to listen to Big Bang, BTS, BAP, GOT7, EXO, <laughs> and um, also I would definitely recommend... Um, I would also really recommend Super Junior. Like those are so that that's a good bro, uh, yeah. broad uh, one of boy groups. You should also listen for girl groups: uh, Twenty One, Four Minute, Blackpink, uh, Sister, and uh, Wonder Girls and Girls Generation. That's a whole big broad yeah. band of current and past. And then if you want some more underground hip hop stuff, listen to Jay Park, Dean, Crush, Zion T, and uh, yeah. It's great. It's great. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, last two questions. Um, what piece of advice would you give to another cosplayer? Now, what I usually want to ask is, people say like, don't give up on your dreams, don't stop going. But what's one piece of advice further than that that you wish you were told when you just got into it? Um, 
So this is probably gonna sound really silly because I'm sure people will tell you the exact opposite. But I don't work the same way as other people. Yeah. So it's okay to be hypercritical of your stuff because that's how you learn from it. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are people when I am like, oh, this one little thing is not right and I know it's not right and I don't like it on my yeah. costume. They're like, oh, it's fine. Nobody sees it. Nobody sees it. And like, they're, they usually tell me like, you need to stop being so critical. Yeah. But I think it's a good to have that balance because it's good to be able to spot the imperfection. Yeah. Don't get hung up on it, but learn from it because that's how you grow. When you are able to see your own like shortcomings and flaws, yeah. you're like, you know what? Next time I make a costume, I'm going to go about it this way and it's going to turn out better. And that's how I got yeah, like sure. a completely... You never be content. You should always like be wanting to improve. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Don't. It's okay to not be complacent or content and to always want to improve because that's the only way you're going to get yeah. better. And I'm, I'm huge with that because like I'm a perfectionist. So it's yeah. like, this is actually not the original headpiece. This is a second one yeah. because it was like the first one had like a seam in the middle and then like a tiny little bump and everybody's like, you can't even see that. And I'm like, but I know it's there. <laughs> I know it's there. Yeah. And it's like, well, if I can remake it perfect, why not do it? So, yeah, and so I, I really think like, it's good to have that balance. Yeah. Um, you know, don't, don't get hung up on it and just know that it's not gonna be perfect the first time you do it, but learn from it and then you can get it exactly right. And you're just gonna keep growing and you're gonna keep yeah. developing your skills. Perfect. And then last question, where can we find you online? Um, you can find me online. I'm pretty active on Instagram okay. under Mucho Muncho. Yeah. I do have a Facebook mainly for tagging, but like I, Facebook is so stupid with like what it shows yeah. and doesn't show. So I'm on Facebook as Mucho Muncho Mania, but that's really for tagging purposes. If you want to see like my work, it's on Instagram. Instagram right yeah. On. And then also to uh, the group I'm the president of, the yeah. cosplay charity group Arizona Avengers. We're very active on Facebook, Instagram, and you can find them under Arizona Avengers. Right on. Perfect. Well, thank you again for joining us. Yeah, of course. And we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.